So I want to examine one of the most uh, amazing and important phenomena in waves, uh, at least in when it comes to optics, uh, and that is the phenomenon of refraction. Refraction is the bending of a wave as it changes speeds as it goes from one medium to another. And uh, this phenomenon actually uh, allows us to make uh, eyeglass lenses, um, you know, camera lenses, uh, all kinds of uh, telescopes and all the kind of uh, instruments that uh, help us to explore the world around us, as well as to better understand our own vision. And so I always use this analogy uh, of a remote control car. I don't know how many of you have played with a remote control car, but if you play with a remote control car at home uh, and you go from one room to another, uh, you're going to change uh, surfaces oftentimes. And so I'm kind of picturing uh, the tile in one room and the carpet in an adjoining room. And if I drive the remote control car from the tile to the carpet uh, straight on, right? if I hit it uh, head on, then the only thing that's going to happen as I move from the tile to the carpet is I'm going to slow down, right? Because the uh, carpet's thicker, it's more resistant, and so it slows my car down. But another incredible uh, and incredibly useful thing happens if I both move from the tile to the carpet, but I do so at an angle. So here's my car. Let's imagine it coming in this way, and as it hits the carpet here, Notice that the wheels don't transfer onto the carpet at the same time. The front right wheel in this picture is going to hit the carpet first, and when it does, it's going to slow down. Well, if it slows down before the left front wheel does, that's going to cause the car to bend, right? It's going to rotate this way until the front left wheel hits, and then a similar thing is going to happen with the back wheels. Uh, until the car ends up bending uh, to the right as it went from the tile to the carpet. That's an example of what's happening with refraction as you go from a medium where the wave is moving fast to where the wave will move more slowly. It will bend towards um, what we call the normal line or a, a line that's perpendicular to the surface uh, as it goes from the fast medium to the slow medium. Similarly, if we go from the carpet to the tile, if it travels this way, notice this time the front left wheel hits first. But what's it going to do? It's going to speed up because the car can go faster on the tile than it can on the carpet, which is going to cause it to turn to the right. And so when you go from a slower medium to a faster medium, you're going to bend away from that normal line. And so this property, or this phenomenon, uh, we can take advantage of uh, when we make something like a lens. So let's apply it to a lens. Uh, the first type of lens we want to talk about is called a biconvex lens. And by biconvex, we mean it's going to be made up of two lenses uh, put together. And each shape, each side of the lens is going to be convex. In other words, it's going to bend outward. And so biconvex literally means two outward facing uh, surfaces. And so it looks like this. And of course, we'll see a practical application of that as we look at what happens uh, to the light rays. Uh, but let's trace some light rays and see what happens to them. Uh, if this ray were to come in uh, parallel to um, the what we call the principal axis or the line that goes through the center of the lens. Uh, again, look at our think of our remote control car analogy. If this light ray had front, front wheels, which one's going to hit the lens first, the right or the left? Well, of course, from this view, it would be the right wheel. And when light hits the glass or plastic of the lens, will it speed up or slow down? It will actually slow down. And so that will cause it to bend this direction. Then when it gets to the other side, now the left wheel's going to hit first, right, because of the, surface, uh, the way the surface is curved. And when the left wheel gets out in the air again, it's going to cause it to speed up, which will cause it to bend even further down. And so the light ray ends up going through this path. It turns to its right twice. Well, then let's look at another wave, right? Another ray right here will bend down. But notice that in this case, the curvature is not as steep, and so the time between when the right side hits and the left side hits is a little bit shorter, and so it will bend a little bit less. 
And then as it goes on the other side, again, the left wheel hits first and speeds up, but again, not as much, and so it doesn't bend quite as much. And so notice, it passes through the same point on the right side. Do another ray, and you see it's going to bend just even a little less, a little less. And then what happens if you hit the carpet straight on, right? Again, if you go through the center, then both wheels hit at the same time, right? The whole weight ray hits at the same time, and so it's just going to travel straight. Then we get to the bottom of the lens in this picture. Which wheel hits first now? Well, now the left wheel hits first and slows down, and that's going to cause it to bend up slightly. Uh, and then the next one will bend up slightly again because the right wheel hits first and speeds up slightly. And then we can just continue that process. This one, left wheel hits first, slows down. Right wheel hits first, speeds up. Left wheel hits first, slows down. Right wheel hits first, speeds up. And because the ones down at the bottom, there was more curvature because we were further away from the center. Uh, they bend more. And notice they all end up coming together in a certain point. And for that reason, we call them a con we call a convex lens a converging lens because they cause the rays to come together or converge at a certain point. And that point we call the focal point. And I put on here that that's the ant leaf location. Uh, if any of you ever played with, uh, this is obviously a magnifying glass bent out on both sides. Uh, if you go outside, uh, you place a leaf at the focal point. And what happens to all the rays that came from the sun, they get converged and concentrated in a very small location. And uh, that's how you can start a fire with a magnifying glass at that focal point. All right, so now let's look at what we call a biconcave lens. Well, bi meaning two, and concave meaning, you know, facing or curving inward. And so if we have a biconcave lens, it looks like this. And let's trace our first ray. As that ray arrives, the left wheel, if you will, hits first, the left edge hits first. And as it hits the glass or plastic, it's going to slow down and the right wheel is gonna be traveling faster and so it bends up slightly. And then the right wheel hits first again, causing it to speed up. So if the right edge is going faster, it will bend up even more. Next ray, same phenomenon, only slightly less bending because again, um, the curvature of the surface at that point is a little bit less. And so it goes that direction. And then of course, if you hit it straight on in the middle, you're gonna travel straight. And then on the bottom side, if the right side hits first this time and bends down because the left side's going faster, then it bends down again because the left side speeds up. And then finally, come in, the right side slows down, then the left side speeds up. And notice that these rays are all going outward. And that's why we say concave lenses are diverging lenses. They cause rays to split apart or diverge. And since they diverge, uh, you may ask, well, does that mean they have a focal point because they're not all coming together? And the answer is actually yes, we have a focal point but it's not where the rays are coming together, it's where they look like they came from. Right? In other words, if you trace the rays back, then they all to appear to have originated from the same point, and that's the point that we call the focal point uh, of a diverging or concave lens. And so uh, in the next video, when we draw ray diagrams, uh, you'll see this place, uh, you know, put to practical use. But there's one other thing math-wise that we want to talk about to get ready for that. And that is, here's our biconvex lens, right, made up of two surfaces that are curved outward. Notice that uh, they're part of a bigger circle. And so I've traced the path of the circle that the lenses are a part of. And the same thing is true of our biconcave lens. They're part of two greater circles. And those lenses, or if they were mirrors, those curved surfaces have a center. And so I've labeled those C for the centers. We call that the center of curvature for either the lens or the mirror. And then the important thing is this. The, those, radius, those curvatures have a radius. Uh, it's called the radius of curvature, or in this case, you know, radii of curvature, because there's more than one surface. 
And then where, how does this focal point that we just talked about relate to the radius of curvature? Well, the focal points, which are right here, are always exactly, for a circular mirror or lens, uh, are always halfway between the center and the surface of the lens. And so, I, I said circular, I mean spherical, right? They're three-dimensional. Um, so for spherical lenses and mirrors, they have a radius of curvature and the focal point where the light rays are either going to converge, if it's uh, a converging lens or mirror, or where they're going to appear to have originated from, if it's a diverging uh, lens or mirror, uh, this relationship holds for all spherical surfaces that the focal point will always be half the radius of curvature.